Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Red-haired Shanks is one of the four current Yonko, and really only Yonko that remains from our original generation, along with Luffy, Buggy, and of course Blackbeard, otherwise known as Teach. But among them, Shanks seems to be the only one who doesn't possess a devil fruit. But even so, without a fruit, he is incredibly skilled using a sword, and is often rumored to be the greatest hockey user in the world. So far, we haven't learned why Shanks didn't eat a devil fruit, and it could be related to his former Captain Goldie Roger, or even something more mysterious that may be revealed in the future. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the reasons why Shanks has not eaten any devil fruit so far, and what would change in his life if he ate a fruit at all. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel, or even if you've been around for a bunch of episodes, we'd be absolutely honored if you consider leaving us a like, or even subscribing and leaving us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out and motivates us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing the video or the channel with a friend. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So friends, the devil fruits are incredible objects that are capable of giving one who eats them incredible, unthinkable powers that can increase the attributes of the user. Now their origins are still a mystery, but there's a possibility that the answers may be somewhere together with the treasure of the One Piece and the lost history of the world. Throughout our story of One Piece, we have seen immensely powerful characters such as Luffy, Kaido, Big Mom, Whitebeard, and even teach. But with these characters and the fact that they possess a devil fruit, it has allowed them to not only defeat their opponents, but also great strength and notoriety in the world. But as far as we've seen, and as far as we know, Shanks is one of the most powerful characters that still doesn't have a devil fruit, which makes many One Piece fans curious to know why that is, and also what Shanks' real potential is. I mean, how powerful can this character be without the addition of a devil fruit? In the world of One Piece, there are of course three different types of devil fruit. The paramecia that allows the user to modify their body structure or produce substances or even manage to manipulate these substances and the environment through their awakening. These fruits are incredibly versatile because they're really a huge amount of diversity of power, such as the ability to turn into a rubber man or manipulate your opponent's souls or even your own soul. But it is, of course, the most varietal of the three types of devil fruit. Now, because of the variety of paramecia devil fruits, the powers that they eat each have are incredibly diverse. But of course, because they are so diverse, it ends up being really easy to identify because the other two types of fruit have very specific characteristics. So to know if a character possesses a paramecia fruit, it's actually quite simple to analyze. Moving on to our second type of fruit, of course, is the zoan fruit, which allows the user to obtain the power of some being or plant or what maybe even seems like an animal. But there are two subclasses of zoan, one allowing the user to obtain the power of a divine or even a mythical creature, and the other, of course, being a prehistoric creature. The ancient or prehistoric zoan allows the user to transform into some pre prehistoric creature, like a dinosaur or a pterodactyl or other prehistoric creatures, while the mythical zone allows the user to transform into some mythological or divine creature, such as a phoenix or a Buddha or a dragon or even a sun god called Nika. One of the other benefits of a zone fruit is it allows the user to transform into the animal form, but also a hybrid form which is a kind of a mix of both their human characteristics and their animal characteristics, which gives them a lot of flexibility in battle. And finally, we have the Logias, which allow the user to create, control, and transform into a specific element from their fruit. And there even seem to be kind of devil fruits that seem to come from the same type of element, such as the snow fruit, as well as the ice fruit. The most special thing about the Logia is that this fruit type allows the user to have intangibility, which means that they can only be hit if the opponent uses hockey or some other element in which they have an advantage over the current Logia user's element. Now this was demonstrated by Luffy, who of course could resist NL's lightning and electricity because he was made of rubber, which is of course an insulator. So even though there is an incredible variety of fruits and Shanks has had really time to explore the entire world and potentially come across some of the most special, Shanks has still refused to eat it and even had the Gomu Gomu no Mi in his possession, but preferred not to eat it for some personal reason, leaving the fruit stored in a small little kind of trunk or uh, like treasure chest. So it seems Shanks prioritized his physical strength and his sword fighting skill and increasing his hockey. And in this way, he managed to become an exceptionally powerful and even winning the title of Yonko without a devil fruit. And again, Shanks is the only one of the past and current four Yonkos that doesn't possess a devil fruit. I mean, even our new generation of Yonkos possess a devil fruit, one of which, in fact, possesses two. But 
but it shows that this doesn't necessarily mean it's a requirement to become a Yonko. In fact, we even saw Kaido say as much at during his fight with Luffy, saying that Roger never needed a Devil Fruit, that it was just his hockey that allowed him to become King of the Pirates. Now, Shanks has said a few times that he hasn't eaten any Devil Fruit because it would take away his ability to swim, something that he even was very sad about with Luffy after he ate his Devil Fruit because Luffy will never be able to swim again, and really, water has now become his enemy. But the real reason why Shanks hasn't eaten a fruit may go far beyond just the ability to swim or what ability a fruit might offer. In fact, it may go back to who I was just talking about, and Shanks could be taking inspiration from his former captain, Roger. Because as we saw, Roger never possessed a double fruit. That was confirmed by Kaido, as I just said. And he only fought with his sword, just like Shanks. So Shanks could be trying to follow directly in the footsteps of his old captain. For this reason, Shanks also began to recruit people to his crew who possessed a great special ability without the need to possess a devil fruit, so that he could create a crew of pirates who fight only with the strength that they have achieved through their own efforts. Apparently, all the pirates in Shanks' crew use a sword or gun or some other long-range tool, and also use hockey so they can strengthen their equipment and defeat other fruit users. So because Shanks wanted to maintain a crew that would only have pirates without devil fruit power, he initially denied Luffy entry to his crew because Luffy, of course, had just eaten the Gomu Gomu no Mi and had a devil fruit power. In fairness, we do not know if Shanks created his crew of fruitless pirates out of admiration for his former captain or for some other unknown reason. Maybe, for instance, that he knows some secret that the devil fruit hides and just we haven't learned it yet. For as we already know, Shanks participated in Roger's adventure in search of the truth. And in this adventure, he might have gained some knowledge about the devil fruit and how dangerous they can be. Throughout Shanks' life, he's also seen how dangerous a devil fruit can be. And as we've seen in Luffy's journey, he showed several times that the power of a devil fruit was very dangerous because of the great danger it would present if the user lost control of it or used it in some uncontrolled way. Just as an example, when Luffy uses his gear second, it was initially said that this form caused him to lose his life energy while he was transformed. And even the awakening of his devil fruit that we currently saw, it seems it might be taking the same toll on Luffy's life as well until he gains full control of the power. Because as we've seen and also had explained to us by people like Law and Kid and even Doflamingo, with the awakening, a user obtains an unimaginable level of power from the Devil Fruit. But this power also comes with many drawbacks, with the existence of, you know, consumption of the user's physical and vital energy, something that we saw that Law and Kid really waited until the very, you know, peak of their fight against Big Mom before they used the awakened abilities of their fruit. This fatigue that awakened fruit users suffer when using their powers for a long time may mean that their life is being shortened little by little. And even if it isn't present, you know, right then, the visible wear and tear that they will cause could show symptoms that may appear in the future. Because if you think about it, it's really hard to imagine how there's this immensely great power and it doesn't have some great consequence or cost. I mean, many might say that just losing the ability to swim was the really huge disadvantage, but it really seems that there's more to it than just losing the ability to swim. I mean, even hockey does have a disadvantage of consuming the user's energy if they can't use it in a perfect way. But again, with hockey, the consequences may not be as severe because the user is using their own life, while as the devil fruit may be taking more than their body can potentially give. Or perhaps it could be that once the user is worn out from using their fruit power, if they continue to use it, it starts consuming their life and slowly kills themselves because of using too much power or maybe just completely giving up their life after the attack. And that alone, that loss of life, that risk, could be why Shanks prefers to use his hockey and able to confront his enemies on his own terms because it's much safer and doesn't endanger him losing his life. But Shanks doesn't just have hockey at his disposal. Remember that he is also a master swordsman and fencer. And when he combines his swordplay with his hockey, he is able to hold his own against the greatest swordsman in the world um, and able to deliver incredibly powerful slashing blows to his enemies. And in this way, Shanks could even achieve or maybe has even surpassed the level of fencing as Roger had, enabling him to take on powerful enemies such as Yonko and even allow him to rival the world's greatest pirates and people, period. But with all that power, Shanks probably wouldn't want there to be something that could take away his power. And of course, the disadvantage of a devil fruit is that 
that if you are in contact with seawater, you lose your ability. And this hindrance could have been just too much for Shanks to follow and take on his adventure. After all, we are talking about pirates that are always on the water. So they're literally surrounded by their weakness. And if Shanks were to fall into the water, especially during combat, it would be an incredible disadvantage during a battle. And being a Yonko who likes to sail around the world, this pretty much keeps him in danger every time he's at sea. So it could be one or it could be all of these facets that really kept Shanks from eating a devil fruit because he didn't want to sacrifice his lifespan because he still has something very important to do, as well as wanting to see his crew fulfill their dreams together. And so by having a crew where no one owns a devil fruit, they would have much more time to to enjoy their lives as they sailed over the vast seas and celebrate each adventure that they fulfilled. Because as we can see, Shanks has never needed a devil fruit to be strong. And it's this reason why he just decided, you know, these powers weren't necessarily for him. And for this reason also, not even Shanks' crew members wanted to do that because they want to go on to conquer places and get riches just with their own strength and thus honoring the legacy that Goldie Roger left to his pupil. Shanks. But with all that said, friends, I'd love to know what you think about it. Do you think Shanks would ever take on a devil fruit? And also, if Shanks doesn't have a devil fruit, how has he managed to accomplish some of the things that he has? I mean, I didn't mention it earlier, but think about how fast he made it to Marineford after meeting up with Kaido. So perhaps there's something that you can use that doesn't require a devil fruit. Or also, do you think that there's something in a way of honor that Shanks is showing to his former captain? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Well, friends, that's gonna bring us to the end of our video, and I wanna thank you all so much for watching all the way up to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, why don't you give us a like or hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. I really hope to see you all in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.